Welcome to a short video on the BJT high frequency model and parameters. So we are quickly going to have a look at the high frequency model, talk a little bit about the model itself, then how we get the parameters and then a little bit of a example. Okay, so the high frequency model looks a little bit different from the model that you're used to in the analysis and it has a resistor and two capacitors extra and for some R out might be new. So this small Rx value that's been added to the model here is the resistance of the base materials in the transistor. And then C pi and C mu is the capacitances from the base to the emitter and the base to the collector that basically exists due to the junctions. So if you put a voltage over the junction, you have separations of positive and negative charges and the area in between with no charge and that is basically um, if you look at physics a capacitor and this c mu and c pi is dependent on the bias of a transistor and then the transition frequency which is a bit more on a bit of the actual size of a transistor in the end of the day and um, the, the bias itself. So let's have a look at these parameters. So the transconductance R pi and R out shouldn't be that new, but the new ones is Rx, C pi and C mu. So the transition frequency is basically the gain bandwidth product of the transistor and we have equation for a gm over 2 pi c pi plus c mu so the combination of these two will give our transition frequency but we are sitting with a bit of a issue a uh, data sheet usually gives us the transition frequency the forward current gain as a range and the collector capacitance and that is only one of these parameters maybe two partly um, so a data sheet typically doesn't give us all the parameters that we want to know so i'm quickly going to open the data sheet and show you okay in a data sheet, you will get typical things like the maximum current and the maximum VCE voltage and what the part looks like and pinouts, maximum information and then you will always get ranges of things. Um, stuff like the beta value being between 100 and 300 with specific collector currents and VCE voltages. That's not going to do us any good if we want to simulate a problem um, at all. The only thing useful you get from the data sheet is usually the transition frequency and for the 2N quad 2 is 300 megahertz and then our collector capacitance at 8 picofarads but in general these are not as useful as they might seem then we have some transition kind of um, time parameters not to be confused with the forward transition time that we are going to use to calculate one of our parameters so data sheet only gives us so much information about the higher frequencies or the modeling of our transistor 
Okay, so let's go back to our presentation. So we only got three parameters from this and this one is a little bit useful because it's typically the same as one of the spice model parameters. Um, so the spice model gives us the best information on a component. Okay, it typically uses average values or what the really typical value for a parameter might be or for a specific component. Okay, so things that we need to calculate our parameters, Vt we know is at the room temperature about 25 millivolts. Beta we know, but this is a range on a data sheet. Um, that should be Va, sorry. Um, Va is early voltage. And then ft and rx okay so we can get the early voltage from from the spice model um you can get spice models online or if you're lucky and or using something like alti spice the spice model is actually there when you do your component selections so vaf is your early voltage bf is your forward current gain or your beta value and there's a lot of stuff that we won't be interested in at this point cjc is that collector junction capacitance um well it's not exactly the same but you'll find that this one from the data sheet and from the spice model is typically the same then we are interested in this TF right here. That's a forward transition time. That is probably the main one that we want from this model, and that will give us the approximate value of our CPI value. And then lastly, over here we have RB, and that is our base materials. You also find things in the SPICE model like the maximum current rating and maximum voltage rating and also if it's from different manufacturers so i chose a philips spy um philips data sheet because i have a philips spice model here um i think for one in alti spice is nxt so depend on manufacturer what you'll get and for interest sake, a lot of people has asked me where you get the saturation current for a transistor because it's also never in the uh, in the data sheet. You also find it in the spice model, and there it is. Okay, so we have specifics for the early voltage, for the forward current gain, for the base materials. Not going to use this one, collector junction capacitance and the forward transition time. Usually picofarads, picoseconds, small um, resistance here, early voltage, 30 volt, 200 volt, stuff like that. These are kind of really standard. Um, so let's continue on to a bit of how uh, we calculate our parameters from the spice model parameters. So we have some equations to calculate our CPI and our C mu, but we will mainly focus on this this top half. Um, so to get our CPI, we need to calculate our transconductance, and if we multiply the forward transition time with our transconductance. We will get our CPI value and then we can use our transition frequency and get out our C mu value. And our base materials is just equals to RB. So this is the easy way. Then there is a longer way to find our C mu value and that is to take that junction um, capacitance that we got, find our collector base voltage of our transistor, and then use this equation to calculate our C mu. 
But the problem is you typically don't know what these two values are and the spice model or the simulator will typically use the default values 0.33 for MJC and 0.75 for VJC. Um, so I find that this is a better way to, to calculate some of those parameters. But if FT is a bit of an uncertain one for you, you can always use this method. Um, so, yes. On to a bit of an example. Just to, to demonstrate. And if you calculate C mu for the following example, it will be about three picofarads higher than what you get here and um, that doesn't work out at all when, when you actually go and do the calculations to find the higher cutoff frequency it is way off um, so we're going to stick with C pi and the transition time and the FT that we do know. So if we have a transistor that's biased to 200 microamps, we can calculate the transconductance at 8 milliamperes per volt. Our, our out will be 500 kilo ohms, with VA being 100 volts, and IC at 200 microamperes. C pi will calculate to 3.2 picofarads. Okay, our transition frequency is 300 megahertz. And we can rewrite this equation to be C pi plus C mu is the transconductance over 2 pi ft. And that will give us 4.244 picofarad. And if we subtract the C pi, we will get the C mu at 1.044 picofarads. And our base materials is 10 ohms. So quite straightforward. This C pi, however, is also a bit of approximation. There is more hoops to jump through if you want it exactly. But this will give you a great idea of your amplifier um, capabilities. So yeah, that is how to get some of our small signal model parameters or our high frequency parameters from, from SPICE models. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video where, where we will start to tackle actual high frequency um, analysis problems. Thanks for watching.